What's up, friendos? It's me, it's me, it's Exotic MTG, and we're going to open up a box of Morning Tide for giveaway winners and Patreon patrons alike. We're also going to open up this random pack of Battle for Zendikar just to get us heated up. This is for Ian M. He wanted one of these. Uh, he's a patron, so I figured I would throw it in with this video and see what he gets. Grip of Desolation. On do rising, blighted gorge, and a hey, look at that an Arkham Firebird. It's a mythic, not a bad way to go. Two and two red for a three three flying haste. It attacks each turn if able, and it has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay six total. If you do, return it from the graveyard to the battlefield. Very cool. And a full art swamp and an Eldrazi Scion. Hey, that's not a bad way to start this off. Hope you guys have enjoyed everything you've been watching from the channel and i hope that we can continue to move on up we're like 1450 subscribers or so so if you're not already subscribed check that out if you guys want to know which pack of this is yours go to the discord there's going to be a channel in the discord server link that's down below and you can go to the morning tide box numbers channel so you'll see like you know if you're a patron and you're expecting a pack from the set or if you're a patron and you're not expecting a pack from the set and you still want to see if you get one of the packs from this set, you can go to that Discord server, you can go to that channel, and find out which pack number is yours. So here it is, nice and crisp. Morning Tide packs. We're going to go ahead and grab these out row by row. And I'm going to mark each pack, and then I will be right back. Because we need to number these. And uh, we only have 29 packs no, I'm sorry, 30 packs. I forgot to mention that one. So, Lily of the Veil. So we just had uh, one of these packs, pack number 30. It was uh, just one on Twitter. And if you guys want to check that out, I'm at ExoticMTG on Twitter. It was won by Ellie of the Veil, or Eli, but I think it's Ellie because it's a, it's a female. So I think it's Ellie, but maybe it's Eli. I don't know. It's spelled E-L-I. But anyway... Uh, yeah, so she just won pack number 30. I'm going to go ahead and number all these, and then we'll be right back, and we'll get going with the pack openings. So here we go. All right, friendos, so we're back. We have numbered all the packs for the people that are going to go to Discord to check out which pack or packs are theirs. I wanted to go over this really quick because I think it's really cool. So um, if you open this up, there's actually a tournament bracket in here that you could use to run your own tournament right out of this box. Pretty cool, right? I just have never seen that before, so I figured I would show that off. A very interesting little insert. P show your players how they rate. Cool. So let's get right into this. We'll start with pack one, go all the way to pack number 30, which was just one, like I said, by at Ellie of the Veil. Vale. So congratulations. Um, so that's the only person you're going to know who won, and that's, that's pack number 30. So here's one. Let's see what we can gather in this delicious box of Morning Tide. I'm going to try to keep these in order behind me so it helps me out with shipping purposes. Dewdrop Spy, Earth Brawn, Kithkin Zephyrnot, Zephyrnot, Fire Juggler, Weed Pruner Poplar, uh, War Spike Changeling, I have seen him before. Blight Soil Druid, a Forfend, Mud Buttoned Clang uh, Clanger, Deglamor, Deglamor, yeah, Deglamor, that's what it is. Ink Dissolver, the first uncommon is a Never Maker, followed by a Wolf Skull Shaman, which is really, really nice artwork. I love that artwork. A third is a, oh, look at that, a Heritage Druid. That is a dang good pull in the uncommon slot. And a cream of the crop. So let's read what cream of the crop does. Fairy rogue token. So the cream of the crop is one in a green enchantment. Whenever a creature comes into play under your control, you may look at the top X cards of your library where X is that creature's power. If you do, put one of these cards on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. And my editor-in-chief will go ahead and keep us posted on the total value of pulls. Um, so yeah, on the bottom left, check that out. But now we know pack number one. All right, here we go, number two. 
We'll get quicker on the commons as we go. When we start to see duplicates, we will start going a little quicker. All right. Kithkin, Zephyrnaut, we already saw him, and Fire Juggler saw that. Weed Pruner, Poplar, we saw that. Okay, we've seen all these. All right, now here, here's a new one. Violet, Paul. Uh, Distant Melody, good card, love the artwork. Everbark, Shaman. Eek, Pulling Teeth, that is a gnarly bit of artwork there. Mosquito Guard. Flood Chaser. Morsel Thief. The, <laughs> wow, these uncommons are hot. Sage of Fables. Look at that. Pack Fresh Sage of Fables. Another Heritage Druid. Pack 2 is Lit. Graceful Reprive. And the rare is a Muda Vault. Nice. That is a great start. That is so, so nice. Muda Vault from Morningtide with epic uncommons. This pack was worth a total of and is now a total of down here for the box. That's that's pretty sweet. All right, pack three. This box so far is making patrons and giveaway winners happy. Happy, happy, happy. Remember, any giveaway you win from Zodiac MTG has to be claimed through Discord. That server link is down below. So that's one huge reason why you need to join that Discord server. Squeaking pie. Grub Fellows, Ambassador Oak, Fencer Cleek, Changeling Sentinel, Dewdrop Spy, Reigns of the Vine Steed, Lies Alana Bowmaster, Stony Brook Schoolmaster, Negate, very nice negate for you there, Prickly Bogart, a Hostile Realm, our first uncommon is a Water Spout Weavers, a Research the Deep, an awful snout, so that's where he came from. We just saw him reprinted in Ultimate Masters. And we have a Countryside Crusher. Very nice. So a Tree Folk Shaman token. Let's read the Countryside Crusher's one and two red for a three, three. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it into your graveyard and repeat this process. Whenever a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, put a 1-1 counter on Countryside Crusher. Does this have a place in our community-built EDH deck giveaway? You guys tell me down below. Everyone that comments down below about if that card does or doesn't belong and why it does or doesn't, will enter to win a little mystery gift from me. Pack number four. The reason I say that is because Landfall is kind of important in that EDH deck. We've seen him. A Moonglove Changeling. A Shard Volley. A Changeling Sentinel. Latchkey Fairy. Winnower Patrol. Fester Creep. Hostile Realm again. Coordinated Barrage. Another Negate. Bosk Banneret. And the first uncommon is a Noggin Whack. A Obsidian Battle Axe, which is pretty cool looking. Thornbite Staff, and a Stench Skipper. That's creepy looking. Stench Skipper, one, no, three and a black for a six, five fly. That thing flies? Really? At the end of your turn, if you control no goblins, sacrifice it. Okay, so it belongs in a goblin deck. Very interesting card, never seen it before. Pack number five. We're gonna start scooting through those commons a little bit here. Hopefully I can learn how to open packs at some point. Jeez, I mangled the heck out of that one. Alright, here we go. Disperse. Beautiful. Where's our foils at? Alright, first uncommon for pack number five. Stink Drinker Bandit. Stomping Slabs, Cloak and Dagger, and a Shared Animosity. Good pull. Beautiful Near Mint sh uh, Shared Animosity. This is pack five. Pretty, pretty sweet right there.
pack number six. That does come after five, I believe. If you guys have the time, make sure you go to all the different social link, social media links down below and follow where you are because it would be great to have you around. Distant Melody again, very good card. All right, Sens Tactician, Walker of the Grove, Daily Regimen, and a Mind Spring. Mind Spring is X and two blue draw X cards. That's pretty sweet. Pack number six. We're having a good box here. As you can see, our total on the bottom left, we're doing our right. It's not very often you get to see boxes like this get opened. And you'll be able to see stuff like this more and more here in Exotic MTG. Just keep on supporting. Without the support of you guys, we can't really do what we do. All right, Bramblewood Paragon. Revive the Fallen. Release the Ants. And a Guilt Leaf Arch Druid. And our first foil is a Graceful Reprive and a Fairy Rogue. So our first foil has been gathered. We have three and two green for a three, three. Whenever you play a Druid spell, you may draw a card. Tap seven untapped Druids you control. Gain control of all lands target player controls. Okay. That's a fun one. Pack number eight. We're going strong here. That teeth pulling one is creepy. All right, Wandering Greybeard. Una's Blackguard. Redeem the Lost. creepy she's she's super creepy her face is all I guess she's a sin that's probably why all right and a leaf crowned elder and a giant warrior token so two and two green for a three five and it uh, has kinship at the beginning of your upkeep you may look at the top card of your library if it shares a creature type with leaf crowned elder you may reveal it. If you do, you may play that card without paying its mana cost. It's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Back number nine. Another Obsidian Battle Axe. A Thornbite Staff. Walker of the Grove again, and a Scarblade Elite with an advertisement. Two black for a 2-2 two, two Elf Assassin. You can tap it, remove an Assassin card in your graveyard from the game, destroy target creature. Cool. All right, pack 10. We're averaging a pack a minute here, ish. Try to pick up the pace. All right, Una's Blackguard. Rage Forger. Awful Snout again, and I think we have a foil in this pack. We have a uh, preeminent Captain is our rare. Our foil is green, and it's a rare, and I was really hoping it was a different one. But hey, here we go. It's super dark, and actually has a factory line in it. See that? That's not a good thing. Why does it have to be our foil rare that that happens to, you know? Uh, great boy Doy great bow Doyen, four and a green for a two four. It's a rare elf archer. Other archer creatures you control get plus one plus one. Whenever an archer you control deals damage to a creature, that archer deals that much damage to that creature's controller. And uh, preeminent captain is a two and a one for a two two first strike Kithkin soldier. Uh, whenever a preeminent captain attacks, you may put a soldier creature card from your hand into play, tapped and attacking. So that was pack number 10. Hopefully we can snag another rare foil. But hard to say. Anything could happen. 
our third episode of Case of the Mondays had two mythics back to back. It was the eighth pack and ninth pack, and they were the same. Uh, they were same the same mythic rare. So I thought that was interesting. So anything could happen in the world of MTG openings. <clears throat> Swell of Courage. Veterans Armaments. That's pretty sweet. Another Redeem the Lost. And a Earwig Squad. Those dudes are all up in those ears. Three and two black for a 5-3. They have Prowl. You can pay two and a black for that. When Earwig Squad comes into play, if its Prowl cost was paid, search target opponent's library for three cards and remove them from the game. Then that player shuffles his or her library. That's pretty cool. I mean, you're still getting a 5-3. A oh, but you have to pay that and that. Okay, you have to pay both. You can't pay that, play the card, and get that. To, okay, that makes sense. All right, pack number 12. Man, these are tough packs. You don't make them like this anymore, my friends. Rivals Duel, Stink Drinker Bandit again, Warren Weirdling, Weirding, Weirding, yeah, Weirding. Things like uh, getting split in half, it's weird. And the rare is a Rise the Exiled, that's a pretty good one. Two and a green for a 3-2, whenever Rise the Exiled attacks, you gain one life for each elf you control. You pay a black, sacrifice an elf, regenerate it. That's a pretty good card, I mean, it's legit. All right, we are 33% of the way through the box. Mm. Slurp, slurp. Here we go, pack 13. Here we go. Meadow Boon. Una's Blackguard again, Cloak and Dagger, and a Sigil Tracer. One and two blue for a 2-2. Two, two. Say that five times fast. Merfolk Wizard, pay one and a blue, tap two, untap Wizards you control. Copy target, instant or search for spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. We have potential to a good foil. Water Spout Weavers. And a Goblin Rogue. Three and two blue for a three three with kinship. God, these old foils. As long as there's not factory lines in them, they're beautiful. All right, pack number 14. Pyroclast console. Cloak and Dagger yet again, and another graceful reprieve with an unstoppable Ash. Three and a green for a 5-5 five, five with Trample. Champion a Tree Folk or Warrior. When this comes into play, sacrifice it unless you remove another Tree Folk or Warrior you control from the game. When this leaves play, that card returns to play. Whenever a creature you control becomes blocked, it gets plus zero, plus five until end of turn. Wow, that's, that's heavy duty stuff. That was pack 14. It stinks that I can't just like rip these right open. I need to save the packs so I can keep them in the right numbered area. But I hope you're enjoying yourselves. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and any other videos you watch that you like, even if they're not mine. Nightshade uh, Schemers, Redeem the Lost, Thieves Fortune, and a Battle Tide Alchemist. Three and two white for a three, four uh, Kithkin Cleric. Oh, the Kithkins are the ones with the, 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 the stretched out faces, my bad. If a source would deal damage to a player, you may prevent X of that damage, where X is the number of clerics you control. Well, that makes sense. Clerics should be doing stuff like that. Oh, 
Wandering Greybeard, Spite Bellows. What Modern Masters set is it that reprinted that? Was it Modern Masters 2015? I think it was. Daily Regimen, a Marilyn of the Morning Song, one and two black for a two, three. We do have a foil back here. Players can't draw cards. Uh, okay. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player loses three life, searches his or her library for a card, puts it into his or her hand, then shuffles his or her library. That is crazy. I bet that sees some fun play. And our foil is a weed pruner poplar. What sets would you guys like to see open here on Exotic MTG? Let me know. I gotta, gotta change things up every now and then. Let me know what you like. Oh, I thought that was gonna be an advertisement, my bad. Can't judge a book by its cover, bro. All right, Orchard Warden, Warren Weird, Weirding, uh, Boldware Intimidator, I think that's how you say that. And a Auntie Snitch. Okay, we got the Auntie Snitch. Two and a black for a three, one. It can't block. It has Prowl, one and a black. Whenever a Goblin or Rogue you control deals combat damage to a player. If Auntie Snitch is in your graveyard, you may return Auntie Snitch to your hand. So that is pack number 17. I think there's a promo version of Auntie Snitch, isn't there? I can't remember. It feels right when I say that. It feels right. Rage Forger. Sage of Fables, another good uncommon. Research the Deep. And a Kinsbale Cavalier. Three and a white for a 2-2 two, two. Kithkin Knight. Knight creatures you control have double strike. Yikes. It's not every day that we have videos that go this long, but it's so worth it when you're opening a box like this. Hunting Triad. Sage's Dowsing. Revive the Fallen. And a Weirding Shaman. With an Elf Warrior. Oops, dropped the Shaman. Let's read what the Shaman does. One in a black for a 2-1. You can pay three in a black, sacrifice a goblin, put two 1-1 one, one black goblin roads creature tokens into play. That's pretty cool. I kind of like that. Just throwing packs all over the place. There's number 20. Shout out to all my patrons out there. Thank you so much again for doing so much for the channel. I really enjoy sending loot to you guys every month. And if you're not already a patron, what is stopping you? Tell me right now, down below, why are you not a patron? And maybe we can talk about giving you a free month of patronage. All right, Noggin Whack. Rivals Duel, Veterans Armaments again, which is a great pull, and a Murmuring Bosk. I gotta be honest with you guys, I have never seen that card, and I like how it's kind of got a yellow border. We have a Stony Brook Banneret Foil in this pack. Again, this is pack 20. Murmuring Bosk, Land Forest, add a green to your mana pool. So this is considered a forest. As Murmuring Bosk comes into play, you may reveal a Treefold card from your hand if you don't. Murmuring Bosk comes into play tapped. You can also add a white or black to your mana pool. Murmuring Bosk deals one damage to you. So that's, that's an interesting land card. I've never seen it. I like it. Love the art. I want to see it in foil. I have to admit, I want to see it in foil. I don't think we're going to get one in foil, but I want to see one. Oops, I need that over here. Wolf Skull Shaman. Thornbite Staff. Another Heritage Druid. We got three. You know, in, in the modern era of uncommons, magic uncommons, like Fatal Pushes and stuff like that, it's, it's like we can't freaking get but one a box. We've got four of these now, I think. And we have a Fen Deep Summoner with a Merfolk Wizard token, which is really cool looking. All right, let's read what this one does. Four and a black for a three, five. Treefolk Shaman. You can tap it up to two. Target Swamps. Swamps. Swamps each become a 3-5 Treefolk Warrior creature 
uh, in addition to their other types until end of turn. Tree folks were hot back then. Keep wanting to throw those in the wrong side. Pyroclast console, Bramblewood Paragon, Thieves Fortune, and a Boldware Heavyweights. They're definitely heavyweights. Fairy Rogue. Uh, two and two red for an 8 8 trampler. When it comes into play, each opponent may search his or her library for a creature card and put it into play. Then each player who has searched his or her library this way shuffles it. Wait, what? So for four, you can get an 8 8 trampling giant warrior? That seems really good, doesn't it? I don't know. Why Why would this, 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 this has to be a good card, right? Is it played? I've never seen it personally, so maybe it isn't played. I don't know. It seems really good, though. 8-8 eight, eight for 4 is good already, and it has trample. And you can get another creature. I don't know. Seems really decent to me. Swell of Courage. Veterans Armaments again. Sage's Dowsing, and a Titan's Revenge. X and two red for, oops, I hit the, sorry about that, guys. I'm gonna readjust here. Sorcery Titan's Re uh, Revenge deals X damage to target creature or player clash with an opponent. If you win, return Titan's Revenge to its owner's hand. Each clashing player reveals the top card of his or her library, then puts that card on the top or bottom. A player wins if his or her card had a higher converted mana cost. Kind of figured that's where they're going with that. All right, pack number 24, the last in the second row, and we'll have six more packs to go here. If you guys didn't end up getting any of these packs of Morning Tide and really want some, I'm gonna have some left over that we can open for you in later months if you're a patron, so just let me know. Spite Bellows, Orchard Warden, Walker of the Grove. I Do we have a foil? No, we don't. We have a Primal Beyond. Oh, we do have a foil, a Fertilid is the foil. So let's check this out. Primal Beyond, love the yellowish borders on these. As Primal Beyond comes into play, you may reveal it. An elemental card from your, you may, you may reveal an elemental card from your hand. If you don't, Primal Beyond comes into play tapped. You can tap it to add one to your mana pool or tap it and add one of any color to your mana pool. Spend this mana only in, to play elemental spells or activated abilities of elementals. That's really cool. <clears throat> All right, pack number 25. We're well on our way. We are almost done. You guys have stuck with me the whole time. Thank you so much. We're rocking. We're going to do Conflux for March, so stay tuned there. And if you really want a Conflux pack for yourself, hit me up in that Discord or become a patron and hit me up. All right, Wolf Skull Shaman. Obsidian Battle Axe again. I think that's our third one. Release the Ants and a Grimoire Thief. Why does that sound familiar? Two blue for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever Grimoire Thief becomes tapped, remove the top three cards of target opponent's library from the game face down. You may look at the cards removed from the game with Grimoire Thief. You pay a blue, sacrifice it, turn all cards removed from the game with Grimoire Thief face up. Counter all spells with those names. Okay, that seems pretty good. Is there a deck that has that in it? Seems good. Have to be modern. It wouldn't be an EDH card, I don't think. Unless I'm just completely ridiculous and not smart. All right. We're getting there. Down to the nitty gritty. Meadow Boon. Daily Regimen. Recross the Paths. And a Feud Killer's Verdict. We've got four, it's a four and two whites. You gain 10 life. Then if you have more than, if you have more left than the opponent, put a five, five white giant uh, warrior creature token into play. That is cool. After gaining 10 life, you better be higher than the opponent. Otherwise you're in trouble. The art in this set is just second to none.
Rage Forger. That's like five of those, I think. Nevermaker, Thieves Fortune, and the new total of the amount we've gotten from this box is not going to be much higher. I don't think Lightning Crafter is a lot of money. Let's see, three and a white for a 3 3 champion, a goblin or shaman. Lightning Crafter deals three damage to target creature or player. Hmm. Maybe it's something. Don't know. Pack 28, third to last pack. Remember, pack 30 is for Ellie of the Veil. If you were to open a pack of Morning Tide, what would be the, the card you'd want most? What's the one card you'd want most? For you patrons out there, just so you know, we also have some leftovers of return, or not return. There's been so many Ravnica sets, I'm confused. I have original Ravnica that we can still open for uh, patrons. So Rivals Duel, Sage of Fables again, which is still just one of the better uncommons from the set. Boulderware, Intimidator, and a Supreme Exemplar with a wolf token. Six and a blue for a 10-10 flyer. Champion and Elemental. That means when this comes into play, sacrifice it unless you... Yeah, we already, we already know about that. But that's pretty cool. 10-10 for seven. Play that in a draft. Chaos draft. We're at 30 minutes, so thank you for spending your free time here with us. I know it is not free at all, especially when you're watching a longer video like this. Hopefully, you're getting some of the loot from this box, and if you're not, hopefully you can get some of the loot from the Conflux box next month. All right, Water Spout Weavers, Diviner's Wand, Awful Snout again, shout out to MTG Unpacked. And a great boy, Do great Bo Doyen. I think I messed up the name last time too. We got it in foil, so we already read that one in foil. So we don't need to read it again. We'll move on to the thirtieth pack. My foot's asleep, so I'm going to rearrange my leg. Uh, thank you to everyone that has supported the channel uh, yet again, and thank you for the winners that have uh, entered to win giveaways like this one here. And hopefully, we can get a nice for this giveaway winner if I can ever get it out of the package only time will tell all right here's our last chance at greatness from this video anyway let's pull some more teeth all right inspired spirit I don't think we saw one of those yet diviner's wand stomping slabs and I don't think we have a foil in here we have an elf warrior token our rare is blue, and it's a Notorious Throng. Three and a blue for a Tribal Sorcery Rogue. It has Prowl. You can pay six for that. Put X, one, one, Black Fairy Rogue. Creature tokens are flying into play where X is the damage dealt to your opponents this turn. If Notorious Throng's Prowl cost was paid, take an extra turn after this one. So you got to pay four. You got to pay ten mana for this to, to hit that extra turn. Thank you everyone again, and I'm not going to waste any time. I'm just going to let you guys go, and hopefully you can click another video from this channel. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.